I'm uh, Suman Kakar Parthi, Principal Product Manager for IBAM. So I want to talk about uh, the security for the outcomes that are actually listed here. So as I said, we optimize the network, and our entire SD-WAN principle is actually focused on how can we evolve an architecture optimizing on the outcomes, right? But none of it matters if we don't have the right security posture of if the security is not right. Because we have financials actually deploying this, and the security posture has to be right in terms of what we enable and how we actually secure our branch. So when it comes to security, this is what I call as uh, four levels of security that we have today, right? The first one is what I call it as branch level security. Or the first one is even more fundamental is device level security, right? Device level security is saying your device itself is secure or not. How do you know that? So today, if you look at ISR 4K or any of these routers, these are we are talking about uh, FIPS compliant, NSSVB compliant, uh, common criteria certified and stuff. There are a lot of third party certifications, right? But what do they actually mean? <coughs> so these certifications mean that most of the devices, when you actually load the image, they do a check saying, okay, hey, I'm running the right uh, image or not, valid image or not. But today the attacks are so sophisticated, they, are, they actually go and change your memory maps or the code path that you are actually running and put a malicious code on your system to actually do that, right? Now, when you have that kind of sophistication on the attack side, you really have to change on the defense side on what we do. So when, when I say, when I gave you a list of certifications uh, that Cisco has, it's not about the numbers or the, or the interesting names I said, NSS would be, it's not about that. It's about like what it offers, right? So what we do here is uh, it's actually built into the hardware where every, uh, if I remember it right, every 15 to 30 milliseconds, we actually check to see if you are running the right, uh, you are executing the right code path. It's not just a static check. It's actually built into the system, built into the hardware. And there is also like where you sh sh store your uh, keys in a secure storage and so on. So to get this, uh, this uh, compliance enabled, you have to do way more than just saying, I wrote the, I, I look at the image and I'll do a CRC check and I'll be done with it. You need to actually have mechanisms to protect yourself against memory manipulations, code manipulations, and so on and so forth. So that's what I call it as box level security. Right? That's one. And the other key piece is transport level security. And we talked briefly about that. The transport level security is about securing your uh, tunnel. We use AES-256 to actually encrypt the tunnel. And more importantly, in the key exchange is, is more, uh, we are using standard-based Ike V2 to actually do the key, key exchange, to actually secure the tunnel. So that's the second part, that's securing your transport, right? Securing your tunnel for the transport. And the third key aspect is, how do you secure the entire branch? So when we talk about leveraging internet or any of the commodity transports, you are actually exposing it to the internet, right? So it's not just about the transport, it's not just about the device, it's more about the entire branch. So the entire branch, what we do it, and we completely automate this using our controller, is we lock down this entire branch and just allowing a, uh, a tunnel which is actually coming out of this branch. And everything is else, zone-based firewall is enabled, and everything else is actually locked down so that nothing actually comes in, everything else is dropped except the tunnel. And why this is important? One, if there is, uh, you are actually reducing your surface area that you expose to an attacker. And two, if there is a DDoS attack or so on and so forth, the path control will actually react to the packet loss and then actually move the traffic to a different WAN link, right? On the head end, if you, if you are terminating different WAN links on different routers, you will actually move to a different router uh, over your MPLS circuit and so on, right? So that's what I call it as branch level security. There are a lot of things that we do for branch level security. We create a virtual routing instance to actually separate the routing table out so that even if somebody gets access, they don't see any of the routes. We actually lock down the entire branch uh, using, uh, using zone-based firewall. <laughs> and this entire process with IVAN app, with controller, is completely automated. So it's taken by default, right? 
So there's no way you, do, you, you don't want to protect your branch. You want to protect your branch. And we completely automate that process to protect your branch. That's three. And the fourth and final one is what I call it as system level security. If you are doing advanced uh, uh, techniques like direct internet access or, uh, or uh, for Office and uh, Office 365 and Salesforce, you want to actually break out from your local branch. For some branches, let's say you want to break out for Office 365. It makes sense because if Office 365, you don't want to access the Office 365 server in New York when you are in, uh, when you are in California. Right? You want to access the server locally. Two reasons. One, performance. right? And saving on the on, uh, and capacity, you will save on your bandwidth if you actually break out locally. So when it comes to this in direct internet access or direct internet uh, breakouts, what we have is for on-prem we'll have uh, Firepower, which I, which can actually run on the same router as a virtual instance on your UCSC server which does advanced uh, threat protection, malware detection, and so on and so forth. The other aspect is uh, cloud web security, where each packet actually goes, the HTTP traffic that you are saying, goes to the nearest POP, which is your cloud web security, and gets uh, the security posture that is required. So this is system level, because you will be Updating your signatures, not just in your own enterprise, but anywhere else if uh, a new security threat comes in, you will be uh, uh, updating your signatures and pushing it to your routers. Right? So you'll be up to date in terms of what is happening, not just in your enterprise, but, uh, but anywhere, else in, uh, anybody, anywhere else in somebody else's network. Right? So in summary, security will be we offer security. This is also this is not this is something actually ingrained into the solution, right? This is not like a separate capability that we have. It's actually by default you will have this. You will have device security. You will have transport security using IP6. IP sorry, using IP6. You will have branch security. We actually completely enable automate this using controller, and you have uh, a system level security which is enabling security for your entire network.